when it is all said, it is the mother and only the mother that is a greater citizen than any man or woman who defends his or her country. It is the successful mother, one who raises her children to be productive members of society in future generations. It is that woman who is of greater use to her community, and if she would only realize it, more important and more honorable than any man in it. That's a quote from Theodore Roosevelt. We honor mothers. I'd like to take a moment. We're going to honor some special mothers, and I've got a couple volunteers that are going to come down and help me. Uh, But we want to take a moment to honor some very specific mothers. The first mother I want to honor, come on down, you can come on down, is going to be what I would call our most experienced mother. Now, the most experienced mother will have the oldest firstborn child. We're not going to ask your age. Who has the oldest firstborn child? Throw out a number. 32. 47. Miss Kitty, how old is your son? Anyone more than 42? 44? Yeah. Sixty-three. Go ahead and take that to her. Sixty-eight. Wow. Congratulations. I'd like to honor what would be our newest mother, and Nancy. You can take it back to her right here. She is due in November. Give her a hand. Now, well, lastly, who is the woman with the most children? Do I have more than three? Seven? I, I hate to ask, but does anyone have more than seven? All right, here you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, take it to your mom. Anytime we talk about mothers, I think it is important to note that Mother's Day is not easy for everyone. In fact, there are almost always some young ladies who want to be mothers, but whatever reason are not yet able to. Mother's Day is difficult for many because some people don't have a great relationship with their mother. Mother's Day can be difficult for some because you've just recently lost your mother. But none of those reasons should give us pause in honoring mothers. It is a very command of God to honor our mother and father. And it is this first command with a promise that we'll talk about today. My goal is to help you better understand what it means to honor your mother. That's what we're going to be looking at today. It's easy to say that motherhood is not very easy. In fact, I've heard it said that mothers are either battling exhaustion or they're battling their own expectations, or even the expectations of those around them. You know, my wife had told me times where she'd go to the grocery store by herself, that if one of the kids was uh, crying or causing a fuss, that complete and total strangers would come up to her and give her advice on how she could be a better mother. And it's, it is not an easy thing to do. I remember the story of a young mother who was getting on a community bus. 
As she was getting on the bus with her six-month-old first child, the bus driver looked at her, looked at the child, and said, that is the ugliest baby I have ever seen. Now, she obviously was not very pleased to hear that, but was in shock. As she was very angry, she came back to the back of the bus and sat down and began to vent to the man that was sitting next to her and said, that bus driver just insulted me. To which the man said, you don't have to take that. March right back up there and give him a piece of your mind. She began thinking about it, but the man urged her again, go ahead and I'll hold your monkey. And it would be said that I tell that outside of the advice of my wife who said not to because she believes, as most mothers would, that there are no ugly babies. Do you guys agree with that? And I would as well. But being a mother is far from easy. That's one of the reasons why we should honor our mothers. We're going to be looking at two narratives in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, we're going to see Jesus, how he responds to his mother, both at the beginning of his ministry and at the end of his ministry. Both these examples, Jesus gives us a better understanding of what it means to honor mothers. So if you found the place, we are going to be in the Gospel of John, starting in chapter 2. And as you find the place, and as you're able, would you stand with me for the reading of God's Word? John chapter 2, starting in verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out... The mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. As we look to John chapter 19, starting in verse 25, we see Jesus at the end of his ministry. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Would you pray with me? Father, we do thank you for the mothers who are here and those mothers who are at home. Father, one thing that we all have in common is that we all have a mother. Lord, I pray that we would better understand the command that you have given us to honor our mothers. In this, Father, we pray that you would be glorified as we become obedient In Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you. You May be seated. If you're taking notes this morning, whether you're looking on our application, there's some fill in the blank there. Some people like to print off an outline, which you can get off our website. But the main idea I want you to get this morning is very simple God expects me to honor my mother. Scripture makes this command without qualification in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. God expects me to honor my mother. Now, it it could be said and probably should be said that a mother is not just the woman who gave birth to you. Many times a child is raised by another woman could be a stepmother, could be a co-parent. I'm not really sure who that might be for you. But 
whoever has served in that position as a mother for you, God expects you to honor them. Now we see in this narrative, first in John chapter 2, how Jesus honors his mother. It says that they were all invited to a wedding and the wine ran out. So Mary, we don't know for sure if Mary was actually uh, one of the just extended family or if this was a close friend, but she was concerned because they ran out of refreshments. So she came to Jesus and said, Jesus, they've run out of wine. Now Jesus' response can be a little surprising. He simply says to her, Woman, what does that have to do with me? Was Jesus being disrespectful? No, he wasn't. Of course, he could have referred to Mary as mother, but he was just simply using the term which is very common among any woman. And with that, he was not meaning disrespect. It would be in our culture, we would say ma'am, ma'am. And then the expression that he uses is an idiom among the Jews. Literally, if you were to translate it as, what is it to me and to you? An idiom would be an expression that makes sense in a specific culture, but maybe not so much in another culture. For instance, we might be saying to someone, are you going to go to lunch after church? They might say, it's all up in the air. Someone not of this culture may start to look. What do you mean? They say, well, I'm not sure. I'm kind of broke. And they may start to examine to see how you are injured. In this culture, it was a very common expression just to say, hey, what does that have to do with us? If I were to paraphrase Jesus could have said, my name is Bennett, and I'm not in it. And saying to Mary, what, what do you want me to do? Now again, Jesus was not being disrespectful. We know this for two reasons. First, he was not saying no, because Mary continued and said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. So she did not understand that to be disrespectful. In fact, she thought that Jesus was going to respond. And guess what? That's what he did. He turned water into wine. Now, when Jesus said, my hour is not come, he was talking about the time to reveal himself as Messiah was not yet here. That's why instead of making a very public miracle, he went off to the side where only a few people saw it. But that's what Jesus was saying. But the important thing was that he did exactly what his mother asked. I wrote it down this way for point number one. I should respond to my mother with respect. Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, as an adult, when Mary came to him with a need, he responded out of respect, and he met the need. Even though by his own testimony, he had no obligation to do that. And that's what respect is, is to honor, that is to consider high, to exalt someone. Now I've heard, uh, it was actually a comic strip I think I heard many years ago, but it kind of stuck in my mind. There was a young child that came up to mom with a handwritten card. And as the mo mother opened it, the card said, I wanted to get you a fancy card with flowers, both pink and and read. But then I decided to spend the money on me instead. It's really hard to buy a gift when one's allowance is so small. So you should be grateful you got anything at all. Happy Mother's Day. There I've said it and it's done. How about getting out of bed and making breakfast for your son? Now, although it was interesting to read that, that certainly was not being a respectful child. I think it was uh, certainly in a comic strip to uh, amuse us, but we have an obligation to respect our mothers. That's a given. Jesus demonstrated that. What does it mean 
for you to respect your mother. In all honesty, that depends on one thing, and that's how old you are. In other words, how we respect our mother is dependent upon whether we are a child or an adult. How do children respect their mother? Through obedience. Take a look at Ephesians chapter 6. Now this is Paul giving description of how to obey the commandment, honor your father and mother. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. We'll talk about that more later. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So Paul is equating honoring your mother with obeying your mother. So I wrote down this way for letter A under point number one. Children must submit to their mothers. And let me say to the mothers, aren't you glad that that is without qualification? It doesn't say submit to your mothers or to obey your mother when she is right. It doesn't even say obey your mother when you agree with her. It says children, obey your mother and your father, period. Now some would say at what point am I no longer required to obey my mother? Scripture gives us an indication that when we get to a certain point, it says that we leave our father and mother and we cleave to our spouse, making an independent household. So that would give us an indication that when someone becomes an adult and they are no longer in the house, that they would be no longer required to obey. And that's what Jesus was demonstrating Uh, Jesus was about 30 years of age, and although his mother came up and asked him something, he he demonstrated, well, I'm I'm not a child in the sense I'm just going to do exactly what you say, but he also demonstrated respect. He demonstrated respect to meet the need that Mary had. So even though someone may be an adult, you still honor your mother, not through obedience, but through something different. I would call that simple fact making appreciation for your mother. I wrote that down for letter B. Adults should appreciate their mothers. So even though you are in an independent household and you are not under the authority of your mother in that sense, you should still appreciate your mother. I've, a- I've had some Young adults ask me, what about when I become 18 and I'm still living in my mother's house? And I usually will tell them to follow the golden rule. The golden rule is simply, he who makes the gold makes the rules. If you are dependent on your mother and father, regardless of your age, You have a responsibility to obey. When you become independent and you're no longer under their household, you are able at that point to no longer obey, but you still should honor. And we do that through showing appreciation. Proverbs 1 says it this way, and I wrote this reference down in your notes. Hear, my son, your father's instruction And forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Saying, it's a beautiful thing when a child continues to heed what the mother has instructed. That the mother and father, what they have told you, it's a beautiful thing if you continue to respect and regard that. I know sometimes especially teenagers, it seems, don't want to listen to mom, and in some cases even dad, because they would say, mom just doesn't get it. You know, an example that a teenager would give, I'm trying to communicate with my friends, 
And my mom just doesn't understand hardly anything. There was a young teenager that was experiencing a time like that in his life. The mother simply had texted the son and said, Your great aunt just died. LOL. Now the son texts back, Mom, that's not funny. She said, of course it's not funny. Why would it be? She said, you typed LOL. That means laugh out loud. She said, oh no. I thought it meant lots of love. I've got a lot of people I've got to call because I said that many times. You could ask uh, most mothers of a certain age probably may not be able to understand all of the technology. Uh, they may not know what IDK means. They may not be able to say all the same things that a teenager says. But does that depend on your responsibility to respect your mother? Certainly not. Jesus demonstrated even though he, the son of God, was independent from his mother and father's authority, he still showed respect to his mother. Now as we continue in chapter 19, we see Jesus this time at the end of his ministry, and he's on the cross being crucified. If you know anything about being crucified, it is extremely painful. And the reason why that they would nail an arm or a leg to a cross is because the only way to breathe when you were suspended with your arms high above your head is to pull yourself up to release the strain on your diaphragm. So for Jesus, every single breath was a painful. But while he was on the cross there, he found it in himself to look to his mother and say, Mother, this is now your son. And looked at the disciple John and said, This is now your mother. What was Jesus demonstrating? Why did he think it necessary to make sure that John was going to take care of Mary? Obviously, we believe Joseph would already passed. So Jesus felt responsible for, for his earthly mother, and he wanted to make sure before he died that someone was going to take care of her. I wrote it down this way for point number two in your notes. Honoring my mother means I must realize that my mother is my responsibility. My mother is my responsibility. Now we might ask, what does it mean to be responsible of your mother? Well, Jesus gives us some insight. In fact, Jesus defines for us what it means to honor a mother and father when he's talking in Mark chapter 9. If you look at Mark chapter 9, I wrote that reference in your notes. Jesus said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or mother, whatever you have gained or would have gained from me is a korban, that is a gift to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother. Thus, making void the word of God by your tradition that you've handed down in many such things you do. See, Jesus understood that honoring mother and father was being available to support them. And what the Jews were teaching is, hey, if you take anything that you should or could have given to your parents and give it to God as a financial gift, you don't have to do anything for your parents. And Jesus said, that's detestable. How can you break the commandment of God through this tradition? So Jesus was saying the responsibility of our parents, and especially that of our mother, falls on 
us as children. So I wrote it down this way for letter A. God expects me to support my mother. As a child, we have a responsibility. If there comes a point where our parents are no longer able to care for themselves, that we take that responsibility. And many times it involves with one or maybe even both of the parents getting to a point where they need their children to support them. And that's something that God expects of us. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that you just invite your mother or your spouse's mother into the home, although many times that's what is done. In fact, I know many times members of the church say, you know, I need to really care for my mother, and so we're going to be bringing them into our house to make sure they're cared for. And I know God is pleased by that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you would invite your parent to live with you, and that's not always possible or practical. In one instance, I heard the story of a man and a woman. In this case, it was the wife's mother, so it would have been the the husband's mother-in-law. And she got to a point where she could not care for herself independently. So the wife came to the husband and said, I really think we should have my mom move in with us. The husband said, okay, but we can't do it in our house. We should find a bigger house. That way she can have her own room. She can have her own kitchen. She can have everything she needs to where she won't be on top of us the whole time. So he began looking for property. He came across the ad for a house and he looked at his wife and said, this is it. It was a house that was two story. And on the second story of the house, it had its own little suite And it even had uh, the chair that goes from the first floor to the second floor. What do they call those? Do you know? What's that? A lift chair. So it had a lift chair where even if if a mother could not go from the first floor to the second floor, it had the lift chair. And this the husband was really excited about. Now... The realtor didn't know what to call the lift chair any better than I do. And the ad simply read, second story house with a mother-in-law suite with its own electric chair. And the man said, this is it. This is the one we need. And I don't suppose that it's ever an easy decision to honor your parent in taking them into your home, or making sure they're supported. But loved ones, God honors that, and God expects that. And that's the privilege we have as children, to be able to, as we'll see, repay our parents. Take a look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 5. This is Paul writing to Timothy with instructions to the church. But the very instruction he gives to the church is, tells us something about God's expectation for children. Look, it says, Honor widows who are truly widows. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. Paul says to the church, Yes, you need to take care of widows especially, but if she has children or grandchildren, it is their responsibility to provide for them. And he's literally saying for the church, you've got to hold back and let them take the responsibility first. And he calls it a repayment to the parent. That is, uh, we are giving them something that they had already given to us. And although we may not remember all of our childhood, there is no doubt that if it was not for a mother, we would not be here. And so we take the responsibility in also providing especially for her. I wrote it down this way for letter B in your notes. I should be attentive to my mother. What I mean by that is it's not just enough 
in some places where, as I've been to several nursing homes, I've, I've seen people that would um, provide financially for a, a parent, a mother, a father, and they would be in a nursing facility, which isn't bad. There are times where a parent may need skilled nursing and you can't do it in your own home. But then you see this uh, older woman or older man and they just completely without visitors at any time. When we're supporting our parent in that sense, I believe God wants us to be attentive to the need and not just to think that we're going to just write a check, so to speak. But loved ones, that is pleasing in God's sight. So let's review. The main thing that I want you to walk away with is God expects me to honor my mother. And we do this in two ways. First, I should respond to my mother with respect. So if you're a child, children must submit to their mothers. As an adult, we should appreciate our mother. And then secondly, I must realize that my mother is my responsibility. I think it's a wonderful thing when, when adults make sure their mothers are being cared for. First, God expects me to support my mother. And then secondly, I should be attentive to my mother. Now, so far we've defined exactly what it means on how we honor our mother. Now, as I close, I want to give you one really good reason why. Why should you honor your mother? Should you honor your mother because you have the best mother on planet Earth? No, even if your mother is best. Why should we honor our mothers? Because they never made a mistake? No, because you have an, a, a great relationship. Maybe not. We honor our mothers first simply because God tells us to. And when we do this, God tells us that there's a blessing in it. Remember, in Ephesians chapter 6, he reminds the Ephesian church of what Moses had commanded. And I'm going to go back to Exodus chapter 22 where he makes this command. And if you remember the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments are a vertical relationship, how we relate to God. And he gives the first four commandments on what we need to do for God. And then from that, commandment 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are our horizontal relationship, what we must do to have a right relationship with others. It's not surprising that the first horizontal relationship mentioned is that to mother and father. And look, Exodus chapter 22 specifically, or excuse me, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. In Exodus 20, it says, honor your father and mother. And then he says there's something interesting, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. If you remember in Ephesians chapter 6, he said, for the, Moses said, honor your father and mother with the first commandment with a promise. You see, the first four commandments tell us how to relate to God. But then this commandment, the first of our relationship with others, he says, honor your father and mother. In so doing, you will be blessed. This is the first of the Ten Commandments that has a very special promise. And I wrote it down this way, and I closed with this. God will bless me when I am a blessing to my mother. God will bless me when I am a blessing to my mother. And loved ones, if your mother is still on the earth and you have an opportunity to honor her today, I hope you've already begun that. But in just a moment, we're going to have an opportunity. If your mother is here in the room, we have some flowers here that I would invite you to come and get to take to your mother. But even if you don't have a great relationship with your mother, even if your mother has already gone home to be with the Lord, take time to honor her. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for each one of us has a mother. 
And Lord, I pray that you'd give us the desire to honor her. Father, I thank you for the mothers in this room, for those mothers who are at home. Father, we just pray that they would be honored today as we take the time to say thank you. In this, Father, we just ask that you'd continue to bless as we are obedient to you because we ask it in Christ's name and amen.